I do have my late Corona's hat on though, so I feel like I can be there a little bit. Nice hat. <laughs> I got my okay. Corona shirt on. Ah, good. Go ahead and mute, y'all. Ah. Okay. We would like to welcome all of our sisters in Christ to our retreat tonight. It is our soup and cheesy fun do treat tonight. Um, it is a blessing that I think we can all still be together despite what's going on in our world with COVID. Uh, the last two nights, we've had some great keynote speakers. For those of you that were on, or if you weren't on, it is being recorded, so you can watch those. But I felt both Reverend Monica and Dr. Williams shared what many of us and other people are experiencing in our world today, especially in 2020 with what we have going on. Um, I truly believe that everybody on this call and every single person can make a difference if they would like to. Um, just by acting, saying, standing up, um, thanking. I mean, there's so many different ways that we can treat people and be kind. And I think that that is a great motto for all of us. And I know um, all of you were so quite kind when I came to my first retreat. And um, I know it's hard for some people, but, you know, even, you know, I've worked at Walmart for 30 plus years. And if you just look somebody in the eye and greet them or even smile to some people, that might be the only smile they get that day. So um, again, I think you all welcomed me so well. So I hope that you all can relax tonight. It's Friday night after a long week of work and you can have a glass of wine or whatever you would like since we are at home and not at Lake Corona. So, um, enjoy our talents that are coming up. I hear we have quite a few and some costume changes even it sounds like. So um, I hope everyone enjoys themselves tonight. And if this is your first night on, welcome. Um, and you, you're welcome to chat or anything you'd like to do on with your chat. So that's it. And now I think it's my turn. It is your turn. It is Ooh, my turn. I like that. And I have uh, a few announcements. If you haven't yet dropped a pin on the map that uh, Not Becky uh, created for us, the link is out on our Facebook page and you can drop a pin on the map uh, or maybe she'll provide another link if we ask nicely in the chat um, so that we can get a, a map that shows where everybody is from um, tonight if you're wondering this is your first first night here and you're wondering what's going on tonight is mustaches and disguises night tomorrow uh feel free to wear whatever goofy thing makes you happy feel free to revisit your gaudy jewelry or your hats from the prior nights um also tomorrow I'll, you know we'll start in the morning with uh, an opening prayer we'll have some announcements we have a keynote speaker in the morning and then we have breakout sessions uh, throughout the day after that. Um, there's an opportunity to take yourself out for a walk. Um, you can do some yoga. I can assure you because we are borrowing my yoga teacher that even if you've never done yoga before, you can do yoga with Rachel. Um, you don't have to bend yourself into a pretzel. If you don't want to do that, there is a book study that you can join in on. There's a second book study that you can join in on. So you can talk about children's books. You can uh, talk about the book not written by Millie's husband. Um, there's rock wrapping, there's Bible study, there's all sorts of things to do throughout the day tomorrow. And we encourage you to, to um, you know, also take some time for yourself during the day tomorrow, but we will have things going throughout the day. And then if I can do this right, I will also share today's reasons why virtual retreat is better. Share. Please hold. Your call is important to us. And let me just see if I can get the get us into presentation mode here. Somebody give me a thumbs up so to let me know that you can see the full full slides. All right. So why virtual retreat is better? Friday's version. You don't have to pack. 
you can redo the parts that you missed because we're recording everything. No need to wear a mask. And you can have booze. You get to see cute babies, especially if you stay late enough for the babies to show up. And you don't have to drive for eight hours to get there. More reasons why virtual retreat is better. And with that, I think the last things just for some general announcements before we move over to our business meeting run by the illustrious Wendy. Um, once we have our business meeting, we will move into our talent show portion uh, in which we will formally introduce our MCs for the evening, Kirby and Melinda. Then after that, we will um, move into our scripture read by Terry Jones, another Visio Divina, and then Vespers led by Tiff Williams. And with that, I think I've done all the things that I need to do. So I will hand things over to Ms. Wendy. Well, welcome to our 2020 business meeting. Um, <clears throat> we are required by our bylaws to have a business meeting. Uh, so hopefully this can be short and fast and furious. Uh, Christy, uh, if you could please read the minutes of the last meeting. I would love to do that if I could find them. However, <laughs> I got them out earlier this year to look up something and I did not put them back in the book. So they're here in my office somewhere, but I did uh, still have my packet from last year, um, reclaiming our souls through friendship. So um, what I will do when I find those notes and I'm gonna keep looking for them, I may have them by tomorrow. Otherwise I will get an email out to everyone of our mi minutes from last year. Again, I apologize, but just one of them weeks. <laughs> I move we accept them as read. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, do I have a second? Second. Thank you. <laughs> It'll be as it been, been moved and seconded and will be on file uh, for anyone to peruse. Next on our agenda, the treasurer's report, Anna. Yes, so treasurer's report. Um, I Looking at, this is last year's information. Um, the total expenses that we had for last year was uh, $12,668.87. Uh, about 10,400 of that was the cost to be at Coronas, which is always our our largest chunk, and then there are some other things, stamps and uh, gift cards, things like that, that are part of the ongoing expenses. For income, we had total income of uh, $14,304.50, of which uh, the vast majority was the cost for rooms and registration. Uh, there's some various offerings, things like that. Uh, so Income less expenses, we had an ending balance of $1,635.63. Um, so we, we came out with a little bit extra at the end, which was good. Scholarship, uh, we had a starting balance of $741. We received in as donations uh, $1,859. And we granted about we granted uh, 1,280, so we are carrying forward uh, $1,749.50 um, with inclu including then some that we took in as part of our Sunday offering um, for scholarships. So when we are able to be back in person, we do have uh, a nice balance that we can use and there's uh, more that has come in um, this year as well. If we look at um, what we re received so far for offerings this year, and this will be more formally in next year's report, we've received just over $1,300 for, uh, for our offering so far. Um, and as was previously mentioned, some of that will cover to the, the minimal expenses that we have this year. Um, and then it will get split between Feeding America and also going into that Beth McWhorter scholarship 
so that more folks can attend. Um, and then looking at the registration information for this year, we had total registration of 88 women. Um, and we ranged all over the United States and our farthest away are where our, our pair from that came in from Paraguay. But we have Pennsylvania, Wyoming, Kansas, Illinois, Virginia, Oklahoma, California, and Athens, Georgia, all represented. I think I probably missed a state or two in there. North um, Carolina. North Carolina. Um, so those were all the, the variety of states represented this year. Um, the farthest if uh, outside of our, our uh, participants from Paraguay is Gainesville, California, with about 2,000 miles, according to Google Maps, from me to Ga uh, excuse, Geyserville, excuse me, Geyserville, California. Can't read my own writing. So I think that's all the stuff I was supposed to report on, unless I missed something. No, that was it. Uh, are there any questions? Any discussion? Can I have a motion? I motion to accept the treasurer's report. A second? I no second. I second. Oh, I'm too slow. <laughs> you can second. It's okay. <laughs> okay, second? having been moved and seconded, it will be placed on file uh, subject to any audit. Any old business? None. Any new business? Nominating report. Kathy? Okay, now I'm not muted anymore. Um, well, it's kind of a weird report this year. Um, Except for, I'll start with the good news, the excellent news, which is that we do have a nominee for vice president, which was the only officer we needed to get a new person. Anyway, so the, the nominee is someone I do not know, Melinda Thomas. Where is she? There she is. Very nice. And she does a good wave, so she'll be great as president. Don't tell her. Um, I'm just kidding. Whatever. So that's your nominee, huh? My face. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's your nominee for uh, vice president, and then the other um, thing we needed to find. People for was next year's nominating committee. And uh, I didn't find anybody for that. So I asked the people who are currently on the nominating committee, myself, Artie Armstrong, who's not with us this weekend, and Terry Jones, who um, is hard to get a hold of, but I see she's here. So anyway, I'm hoping that the three of, I know that Artie and I said yes to this, and you will and all And Terry be... says it's fine. Oh, and Terry said, yeah, that's right. Terry said yes. So anyway, thanks, Terry. We have a nominating committee uh, for you to vote on. It's myself, Terry Jones. Okay, Kathy Hintz, if you don't know. Terry Jones and Artie Armstrong. That's it. That's the end of the no nominating committee report. Thank you, Kathy, and your committee for all their work. Um, are there any nominations from the floor? I'm going to be really Hearing mad if there's a nomination. <laughs> Hearing none. Um, <laughs> what? I said, I don't think I would be mad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you had every opportunity to say no, honey. Okay. I know. I'm just kidding. You can say no right now. For those, for, we're very loose. 
For those that do not know, um, Wendy, do we want to say who the other people are that are coming new on, like President? That's a good idea. Oh. Um, uh, I am leaving um, as your president. Um, I'm going to be followed by the illustrious uh, Becky Whitaker, who's been serving as your vice president for the last four years. Um, and so then that would make Melinda Thomas then the new vice president. Uh, Kirsty Keith is still staying on as secretary and um, Anna Bliss um, is staying on as treasurer to fill out their terms. Any I questions? Move we, I move we accept the report of the nominating committee and um, cast a unanimous ballot. Thank you, CJ. A second? I'll second that. Thank you, Sue. Any discussion? Hearing none, um, if you would like to make a, a raise your hand to vote um, on your little screen there. I don't know how to do that. Oh, voter fraud, I'm doing two votes. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do that right? Didn't you get my mail-in ballot? No. Oh. I, I have hey, pulled off idea. the highway. I pulled off the highway so that I could turn on my screen. Oh, okay. Um, I, I think that's pretty unanimous. Um, the motion has passed. Okay. Okay. Um, In preparation for the new slate and the new officers, and it has been our tradition in the last several years not to provide a physical gift, uh, but I am making a donation on your behalf to the um, Heifer Project. So we're going to buy some chickens or something um, this time. And I'm installing you. Uh, please. Uh, be so installed and um, good luck. And uh, I'm sure Becky will be in touch with you and the executive committee for uh, your future organizational meetings. Um, thus ends my part of the program tonight. And that segues us into our cheesy fun deal. Before we do that, Wendy, thank you. Thank you. I don't know who that's talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like Deb. Deb. Yeah. Oh, hi, Deb. <laughs> yeah, I also want to. I, I'll. I'll piggyback on that too. Thank you, Becky, for for four years of um, or however eight. It might it might have seemed like eighteen years or whatever, but you, you've done a good job, kiddo. Thank you so much. Thanks for all that you do. That you did. Well. It was a labor of love. So thank you, everybody. I look forward to being able to hug each and every one of you next fall. I'll give you a virtual hug. Well, you, you got to know you light up my life. <laughs> and you light up mine. I missed that year. You give me hope. No, you did. <laughs> Are you, carry on. Year, huh? Are you singing this year, Wendy? Are you singing this year? I'm not on the docket of fun for this evening. It's not too late to have a reprise. And that doesn't mean no, does it? <laughs> never say never. Never say never. It'll be a Zoom bomb. <laughs> well, let's take it away to Cheesy Fun Deal. So as a brief introduction to our two MCs for the evening, we do have a bit of a revis uh, revisitation from two years ago in which we discover that when you join, oops, <laughs> when you say the wrong things, you make my dogs bark apparently, um, but we can turn meatloaf sideways. Before we go any further, we love it! 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 We
taste. Perhaps our MCs will stay upright this time. We'll see. <laughs> I turned my camera sideways. That was my fault. I mean, we can't have alcohol this year, so maybe that lowers the chances of them staying upright. I don't know. <laughs> Hi, Kirby. Fan of cheese. Hello, everyone. I'm looking for you, Melinda, to spotlight you. There you are. That's OK. I'm here, I swear. <laughs> there we go. Now we can see everybody. Well, for tonight, we suggest, if it's possible for you to figure out how to do that, um, to switch to speaker view, because then you will be able, whoever is speaking will be the big box on your screen, and you won't have to try and find who's talking. Um, and that way everybody will be center when it's their turn to talk. But um, if you can't find that, that's okay. <clears throat> we'll still make sure you have a good time. And we are expecting to have a great time. We have lots of fun things planned. Anything you wanna say, Kirby? Hey, this is Kirby, fan of cheese. And I'm so happy to be the co MC for tonight's big shindig of fun do. You're, we're going to rock and roll and have a great time all night long. Well, at least for about 30 minutes or so, because then y'all. <laughs> so we want to let you sit back and relax and get ready for a night of fun, fun, fun. So back to you, Melinda. All right. Well, my job is to present the first act. And our first act is none other than our incoming president, not Becky Whitaker. <laughs> And she is going to entertain us with a pre-recorded uh, uh, act on the marimba. And Becky comes to us from Minneapolis and where she attends First Christian Church. I am finding it, just a moment. All good. All right, trying a different way, just a moment. <laughs> Please bear with us. Technology is always our friend, but not always our favorite. Look out, Becky, there's a creeper behind you. There's no sound. Becky, when you go to share screen, you got to check the little box for the audio. I have way too many windows open. Hang on.
Oh, wow. That was fabulous. Wonderful. Uh, fabulous or what? Oh, Miss Not Becky, thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful marimba playing. And the way that you were playing the marimba while you were talking to us in the chat room, how, that, that's real talent. I tell you, thank you for sharing that with us. So are we back on speaker view yet, not Becky? Yes. Okay. All right. There I am. There I am on not speaker view. There we are. Thank you so much. Well, uh, you know, when we all go up to Camp Cronus, um, it's like an a, a adult weekend that we can have a lot of good fun in a camp setting. And, you know, as much as we always love for camp to be so perfect, you know, sometimes there's just a few glitches here and there. And you might remember that famous song made famous by that, that wonderful singer by the name of Alan Sherman, by the, so the song called Hello Mudda, Hello Fada. How many of you remember that song? How many of you are old enough to remember this song? You know how it goes, Hello Mudda, Hello Fada, here I am at. Camp Granada, camp is very entertaining, and they say that Sunday it will it will stop raining, something like that. Well, we decided to come up with our own verses of Hello Mudda, Hello Fada. So I'd like to offer to you my first, the first verse of Hello Mudda, Hello Fada. <coughs> hello Mudda, Hello Fada. I'm in Kansas, not Minnesota. We can gather with the Zoom call. Please make sure you mute, mute when you go to the bathroom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so our next act is straight from Ames, Iowa. And we've got up to bat next, Stella. Stella and Eileen, take it away, Stella and Eileen. Okay, I'm off mute. One second here. Why do you keep on staring in that mirror, mirror? It ain't fair at all. Mm -hmm. Dress sizes can't define. Don't let the world decide what's beautiful. No, you will make yourself a name if you follow the rules. History is many and we're acting the fool. So don't hold back and just go. Show what you got and just own it. No, they can't tear you apart if you trust you. Don't follow anyone. Watch to the rhythm of a different time. Why do we analyze? Break down and criticize. Praise the ones. Oh, 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 you won't make yourself a name if you follow the rules. History is made when you're acting the fool. So don't hold it back and just go. Show what you got and just own it.
traveled on. Take the road, let's travel on. Great job, great job. Thank you so much for sharing. That was awesome. I was hoping everyone could hear hear it okay. It was great. great. Thank you. Well, hey, Melinda, you know, a talent show wouldn't be a talent show without some really, really good jokes. Would you, would you like to, to share with me some, some really super, super jokes? Absolutely. Do All you know right. any? I happen to have some fun jokes. Awesome. Yeah. So, Melinda, did you hear about the Italian chef who died? Oh, no. What happened? Yeah, he passed away. Oh, you know what? Do you know what you call a fake noodle? A fake noodle? I don't know, Melinda. What do you call a fake noodle? And impasta <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one hey melinda you know, did you know i sold my kirby vacuum cleaner the other day yeah i had to sell it all it was doing was collecting dust oh no so did you hear about the fire in the shoe factory the other day Oh, how awful. That's terrible. There was a fire in the shoe factory? Yeah. 10,000 souls were lost. In fact, the police said some heels started the whole thing. <laughs> hey, Melinda. Yeah? Two guys walk into a bar. Yeah? The third guy ducks. Out. <laughs> hey, did you hear the story about the claustrophobic astronaut? Oh no, a claustrophobic astronaut? That's terrible. What happened? Yeah, he just needed some space. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it away, Melinda. Well, our next act is very exciting. We have Carol Walter who comes to us from Lake Harriet in near Minneapolis, and she is going to enthrall us with some poetry. Take it away, Carol. I am going to read to you a poem today or tonight. It's a poem that I was first introduced to and a leadership training session at Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota. My current employer, the one I've been with for 34 years now, at any rate, in this leadership training class that I was taking, one of our vice presidents, Dr. Bill Gold, told us or read to us the poem, The Dash. It meant a lot to me then, and it means even more to me today. It's a poem written by Linda Ellis, and a dear friend of mine actually gave me this book. And I would like to read it to you, and I hope that you can hear me. I didn't practice it on Zoom, but I did practice it because I really love this poem. The Dash. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represented all the time that they spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved me would know that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our debt. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left 
that still can be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our life like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dish might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Thank you. That was excellent, Carol, thank you. All right, here we go. Hello, mutter. Hello, fodder. My slow Wi-Fi is such a hurdle. Women's retreat has gone virtual. I have no idea how we'll do closing circle. Okay, our next act. Um, take it away, Kirby. Oh, uh, no, that's that's your job, Kirby. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for another rendition of uh, Hello Mada, Hello Fada. Thank you so very much for that. Uh, our next act, our next uh, presenter is all the way from uh, First Christian Church, Muscatine, Iowa. Lucy Key has a song for us tonight. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, O oh my soul, O oh worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship your holy name. in love and your slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship. 
worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. Worship your holy name. So worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. Oh, wow. How awesome is that? So wonderful. We could do several that more was fantastic. tonight. That was just awesome. What did you think of that, Melinda? That was fabulous. Really no. fabulous. Just, you know, I wonder if she's in the choir at her home church. You know, yeah. I wonder if she is. I wonder how many of us ladies here are members of the choir. And you know, there's some really, really good reasons to be in a church choir. Did you know that, Melinda? I do. I love church. Well, well, I think we should share with the ladies the very best reasons for joining the church choir, okay? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, number one, you're running out of clean clothes and the robe saves on laundry. Oh, yeah. And you know what else? If your church is usually crowded and you want to make sure you always have a seat, then you should be in the choir. Right, exactly. And you've just been selected for jury duty and you want to get used to sitting with a large group of people. Yes, ma'am. And you know what else is really great about the choir? I don't know, Melinda. What else is great about the choir? The collection plate is never passed in the choir loft. <laughs> never. Reason. Great, great reason. <laughs> totally. I think there's some more that we can come up with and we'll share those later on, won't we, Melinda? Yes, absolutely. Now we have a real treat. Um, Deb Murphy who is part of First Christian Church in Minneapolis, has some visual art that she is going to share with us and um, talk about and explain to us a little bit. So we're excited to see it, Deb. I think you're still muted, Deb. I'm not now, at least according to my screen. Can you hear yep, me? Yep, you're, you're good now. Okay, good yeah, now. I was having trouble with it. So, all right, let's start this over. Um, Okay, um, I do textile art, and a lot of what I do is for churches. Uh, these are pyramids, the one starting on the left, there's the uh, pulpit cloth, and then the altar cloth, and then a banner. I made these for Salem English Lutheran Church, which is one of the partner churches for First Christian Minneapolis in the Springhouse Ministry Center. We're not seeing your screen, Dem. Uh, it's been a fun technology night yeah but but, but we, we were able to beautiful we could focus on your explanation so we're ready now <laughs> uh, wait wait how about we're ready now no nope. <laughs> you'll get it uh, you want to send it to me deb and i'll share it for you um hang on I want them to see your beautiful work. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll, everything uh, I can uh, see is beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. And can you see anything? You. You. So you look you. great. You're beautiful. Uh, you know, I took you off spotlight. Maybe that was overriding it. I don't think it should have. I, I don't know, because I, I, I did share screen. Try one more time, because now I've, I just took you off a of spotlight. All right. Remember to pick the screen you want to share. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, well that was the trouble I had. It wasn't there when I was choosing my options. Yeah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> Yay! Here we go. Yay! Here we go. You got it now? Yeah. We can see it now. Okay, and you can still hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, so. Back to the beginning for the umpteenth time. These are pyramids that I made for Salem English Lutheran Church, which is one of the power um, partner churches at Springhouse Ministry Center. A lot of the textile art I do is for churches and individuals in the churches. On the left is the pulpit cloth. This is for Easter morning. And then in the middle is the altar cloth and on the right is a banner. And then this was the whole setup on Easter morning with all the flowers, etc. And I also made the stole for the pastor to go along with all this. Um, I just, I don't have a picture of it. And this is a banner I made for my brother's church. Where'd it go? There, try that. Um, he had this huge space. They were in a school, like, in the cafeteria and I kept trying to convince him all he needed was a banner and he finally broke down and asked me to make one and he sent me his sermon notes for the series and um, so the one on the right is a picture of just the banner after I created it it's eight foot tall and on the left is the banner hanging in his church and they've been in several locations since then, and it travels with them and gets put up somewhere. Uh, I have pictures of my little nieces at the time during Christmas pageants in front of it. Um, the oldest two are now in college, so it's been a while. On the left is a wall hanging, the 23rd Psalm. And on the right is, um, it, could have been a wall hanging, it could be a tablecloth, it's whatever Lou wants to do with it. Uh, Lou Zhang is the gentleman in the picture. He was our base section leader. And when he graduated from the U, he went back to China. So we made, we made a present for him. Um, yes, we did, Deb. We yes, did we that. Did. We, we do that a lot. Um, the, That's really good. The, uh, Staff is made out of ribbon, and then I uh, applicate on the musical notations, and it's actually the very beginning of O Holy Night, which is the my favorite of the different solos he sang. Um, so, and actually, I held it up and showed him. I said, "You got to sing this now." <laughs> He's like, "What? Oh, okay." On the left is Bill Spangler Dunnan. And th that's uh, a wall hanging that we made for him as a going away present when he uh, moved out of the region. Uh, basically, we wanted to be sure he never forgot Minnesota again. So <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And now the one on the right is a wall hanging. It was somebody else's design, Kirsten. Kukowski designed it. And I then made it from her design. And this was done as a gift for Lori when 
she graduated from her doctoral program and the design was based on her thesis. And uh, Kirsten it's did the embroidery across the top. Um, and then I just stitched the piece on, uh, but that's what we did for her. Uh, this is an Advent Christmas piece. There are five separate banners. And then the little thing on the side is to go over the um, pulpit. You know, it's like the Bible bookmark that you see in some churches. Um, there's uh, hope, peace, joy, love, and then Christ in the middle. Now, each Sunday, like the first Sunday, hope went up. The second Sunday, it was still up and peace went up, etc. So there were four separate ban uh, banners around the sanctuary. Um, and then for Christmas Eve, we put the Christ banner up in the middle and the other banners then right next to it because it was designed as one whole piece. And, and then I have this thing about decorating the sanctuary. Um, on the left, the banners in the back, I made for um, a pro project for seminary, but it, again, it's the advent candles. And then um, we were setting up for the children's Christmas Eve service. And we were gonna be reading them a bed, Anna was gonna read them a bedtime story. And um, I just wanna point out that the quilt was not my work, but it was my mother's. It's the last quilt she ever made. Um, and she gave it to me. So I, I just love that picture. And the one on the right um, was a joint worship service about four times a year, Spring House churches meet together in the largest sanctuary, the South Sanctuary. And somehow we had the theme of water, you know, Spring House, water, makes sense. And um, I was asked to somehow show flowing water, um, which, is what this was. And that's our font. Uh, not that First Christian uses a font, but the other two congregations do. And then on the left are some stoles that I've made. Far left is the one I made for Lori's, I think it was your ordination anniversary, wasn't it? Yeah. Ordination yeah, I think that's right. And then the next one, the one it's turned so you can see both sides. It's white and then the other side is red. And I made that for the current UCC pastor at Spring House when she was ordained and installed. Um, we gave her a set of stoles. And then the next one, um, again, it's reversible. So I've got both sides showing. And that was the, the stole we gave Lori um, when she was installed at First Christian. And um, when I presented it to her, I didn't mention that I had made it. And of course, everybody in the congregation knew I had, just assumed I did. And then when I told her afterwards, I, by the way, I made that, she started to cry. I was like, aw. Um, the next one over is one I made for Tammy Rothschafer for her, her ordination. And that was when the we thing started, I think. Um, <laughs> we are talented. We are, um, and I've got some close-ups of that. And then the next one over was for um, Rhonda, who is the, Rhonda Halamika, who's the Lutheran um, pastor at Spring House. And that was for her installation. And then the one on the far right um, is an Advent tool that I made years ago. Um, for First Christian to have. And the pastors, as they leave, leave them behind. Um, and so Lori is one of them in the shot on the right. And then the little closer up view of Tammy's stole on the left, I wove all of that um, stole for that side of it. And then on the right side, it shows the backing, but it's nice so it can be reversible. And then uh, made a stole for Terry Ford, Ford Owens. Um, she was at Minister's Institute a couple of years ago now. Um, 
So yeah. made that stole. And then the one on the right is the reverse side of it. And what has been really fun for me is when she's been out marching and protesting and I, I see her wearing it, you know, so I end up seeing it on television. Or I even got to see her arrested in it. You know, it's like, oh, my stole is going to jail. That's a weird thing to be excited about, but cool. <laughs> and then uh, the last one is um, I also made a doggy coat. This was a doggy fun, coat. A doggy coat. This was um, okay. <laughs> a going away yes. present for our youth minister at the time. Um, she herself was Lutheran. And she had Sammy with her all the time. And we all loved Sammy. And we told her she could go, but she had to leave Sammy with us. And she wasn't going to go for that. And she always teased Brooke that she was an honorary disciple anyway. So I made Sammy a disciple doggy coat. So, so, um, and that, I believe, is the last one. Yeah. Mm. Well, let me be the first to say, Deb, it's, that is an impressive body of work. And I know that it's just a small portion of the things that you've done and it's gorgeous and stunning and just magnificent. And, and I really appreciate that you showed it to us this evening. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. So, hey, Kirby. Hey, Melinda. I have a question for you. What's that? So I heard that you play some string instruments, right? I do. I play a lot of string instruments. So I don't really play many string in, any string instruments, but I have a question about them. Because isn't a vi viola just a really big violin? Uh, no, a viola is not just a big violin. That is just like calling a bass singer a big tenor. You just don't do that. Uh, okay, okay. Are you ready for some musicale? Absolutely. Okay. desk before. That's a first for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll go right back up to, uh, to camp for verse three of our Hello Mudda song. And remember, I live in Kansas, so I have to put this a little bit into context. Lake Olathe, ain't Lake Coronas, roads to Painesville are pretty lonely. All the locals have to miss us. Wonder if the boats are sailing though without us. <laughs> and I tell you, if there wasn't enough comedy going on around here tonight, boy, have we got another act for you tonight. Uh, all the way from Mason City, Iowa, we have the Reverend Margaret Hutchins to give us her slice of comedy. Take it away, Margaret. 
Hello. This is a little different uh, from standing in a dark brewery or bar, but I thought I would back it up and let you know a little bit about this. About a year ago, um, I started doing sit down comedy. I had to because I couldn't stand. And a shout out to Day Peace for giving me an opportunity to do this. Um, Day Day is the gentleman who kind of brought comedy to North Iowa. He and his wife, Monica, recently had their third child, a girl, um, Kobe Amaya. And, and I, I told him, please, 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 if it's another boy, do not name that child Warren because going through life as war and peace is just too much of a burden for a little guy. Uh, I started, maybe some of you realize that comedy comes from pain and, and I'm no different. Uh, a year ago, February, I, I fell um, and crushed my ankle trying to shovel snow. Uh, I knew immediately that it was broken because it felt like a thousand needles going around in a circle and feet don't flop that way. So I crawled into the house where my phone was on the charger, thank goodness, because I'm not sure it would have survived the fall. If I'd fallen on it, I'd be in real trouble. Uh, the paramedics came and they kept telling me, oh, this is bad, this is really, really bad. And so I asked them, well, I guess this means that this year I have to root for the paramedic EMT half of Battle of the Badges. Normally I cheer for law enforcement because I relied on them for so long. Uh, Battle of the Badges is our yearly uh, fundraiser for uh, Make-A-Wish. And this past year raised over $74,000 that night. But anyway, I get into the ER and they're all looking at it. Go, oh, this is bad. This is really, really bad. And the pain doctor's going, oh, you know, he's looking all stern and, and serious. And I said, well, if you're gonna do it, do it right. Let's not do a cute little hairline fracture. Just let's just smash a few things. So they were doing the x-rays to see what it was going on. And they, for whatever reason, they had to x-ray my lungs. And uh, they told me that I had long lungs. So they had to take two x-rays. I went, what? Long lungs? I've never heard of such a thing. And so I looked up and I said, yeah, couldn't give me something useful, right, God? Nothing like long legs or a long torso. So I could see over those six, eight guys that step in front of me in front of concerts. No, you have to give me long lungs, really? And then uh, the technician or whoever she was, was uh, telling me that they were trying to decide what, oh, the pain doctor left when I said that. I guess he, he didn't know what to do with that. So I'm looking at her. And she said, well, we're trying to decide what to give you, if it's gonna be morphine or fentanyl. And I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. Morphine's what they give people in hospice just before the end. And I've heard about fentanyl. I know what, what that does on the street. I don't like your daily specials. I wanna see a menu. And she looked at me kind of funny. Well, <clears throat> well, they get me to, they end up giving me, I forget, fentanyl, I think. And uh, I go into the, uh, operating room, talk to the, the nurse a little bit and I'm out. And when I come to in the recovery room, the first thing I did was exchange jokes with the uh, recovery room nurse. And I don't remember exactly what he told me, but I know the joke that I told him, it was only and Lee in a joke and it's not appropriate for a church function. So I won't tell it here. But I, I did learn that uh, the people are not used to someone with a sense of humor in the ER, they just kept looking at me like I'd lost my mind. Um, went up to my room and because I was used to working all night and sleeping during the day, I was awake most of the night, but I didn't tell the nurses because I didn't want them to knock me out. I just listened to the stuff on the hall. <clears throat> and I found most people up there were pretty grumpy. Eh, grumpy's not gonna heal you any faster than, so I let my sense of humor go. And there are tests that I had to pass before I could go home. And the last thing I had to do before I could go home was to eat a meal and keep it down. I'm thinking, seriously, this is hospital food we're talking about, <laughs> but okay, <laughs> we'll do this. Um, they released me that afternoon. I went home and I could not get out of bed except to hop on one leg to the bathroom for nine weeks. And then I could slowly start putting a little bit of weight on it. So when Corona hit, I went, no, I've already done this. I started in 2019, six months behind everybody else. I really don't want to do this again. 
but I had practice and it's, it hasn't been all bad. Like I said, I got to start with the sit down comedy and befriend Day Peace, that is his name. Um, Day Day is on Facebook if you wanna follow him, but I will tell you that it's not all comedy and he's pretty out there. He will tell you that he is you know, originally from Detroit and I give him a little bit of guff about that, um, pretending to be a, a tough Detroit boy, but that's why it took two hick chicks to retrieve his keys when he couldn't find them. I <clears throat> start, I went back and did it again and uh, it's been an adventure. It's been a lot of fun. I met a lot of comedians and a shout out to all of them. And I'm going to end with uh, the, the motto from another comedian friend, keep her moving. That's from Charlie Barons, who uh, also has um, a clip that he does periodically. He designed this shirt to benefit Eastern Iowa after derecho. So all the proceeds from the shirt that I'm wearing go to Eastern Iowa Relief. And so that's my time. See you later. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Very good. Very good. Thank you for sharing. There's a lot more that you don't know about Margaret, but we're going to maybe she'll save that for our next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Melinda, I think yeah. I four more great reasons why everybody should join the choir. Would you want to hear some more? I do. All right. Well, there's a clock in the back of the church and you want to know when one hour has passed. Yes, you do. And if you have wondered for years who has been sitting behind you in the back of the church, but were afraid to turn around and look, then you should sit in the choir loft. Excellent, excellent. And <laughs> I know about this one. You've been known to nod off during the service and you don't want the minister to catch you. Right, ladies? <laughs> right. And the best reason of all, is that the chairs for the choir area are padded and they are the most comfortable chairs in the whole church. There you go. That's the right. Reasons everybody needs to join the choir. <laughs> well, here's my next verse for, let me take this off for a second. <clears throat> my next verse for mother, father. COVID's really made us suffer. Social distance is a father, but this tech stuff keeps us together and we don't have to worry about the weather. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. We're all nice and safe and dry behind our computers, aren't we? That's right. All right. So well, there's just, oh, go ahead. At, we're just kind of winding down to the end of our, our talent show. I'm kind of sad it's almost over. And it was fabulous. We have some really talented people and we really appreciate everyone who was brave enough to share something with us tonight. That's right, we put, get ready for next year, wherever we might be meeting for put your talent out there for everybody to share. There's no shame in our game when it comes to retreat. Everybody's talent is welcome. Yeah, look at the two of us, what we're putting up with tonight. Everybody can do something. <laughs> Well, yes, there is that for sure. Everybody's got something. Well, the last act is coming up and it's actually mine. And I recorded it earlier so that I wouldn't have to worry about switching. So hopefully this will work. So Becky, if you can set me going.
man. Can we hear an amen? Amen. What a amen. Melinda, what an awesome way to end this. It was so wonderful. I think you have to have a good voice to be a good vice president. And so they're about to say. <laughs> No, it's not true, but I'm glad that you think that I do. <laughs> and it was my pleasure to bring that to all of you. And thank you to everyone else who brought something to share tonight. It really was so wonderful and meaningful. And now at this time, um, I actually selected that song to move us into our an attitude of towards vespers which is what is our next item so if we're ready to switch over to that um that is definitely the conclusion of our program tonight thank you all for listening and staying and going along with the, for the ride with us the next day as the three travelers were approaching the town Peter went out on the balcony to pray. It was about noon. Peter got hungry and started thinking about lunch. While lunch was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the skies open up. Something that looked like a huge blanket lowered by ropes at its four corners settled on the ground. Every kind of animal and reptile and bird you could think of was on it. Then a voice came, go to it, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, oh no, Lord, I've never so much as tasted food that was not kosher. The voice came a second time. If God says it's okay, it's okay. This happened three times, and then the blanket was pulled back up into the skies. Peter fairly exploded with his good news. It's God's own truth. Nothing could be plainer. God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, the door is open. The message he sent to the children of Israel that through Jesus Christ, everything is being put together again. Well, he's doing it everywhere among everyone. This image for our Vizio Divina is by a Western classical painter by the name of Domenico Fetti. Um, again, it's Peter's vision. So just as a reminder, I mean, Terry just read the scripture for us. So we can meditate on the image with the scripture in mind. And then there are questions to ask yourself about what you saw and, and what you felt, those sorts of things. And it, um, it might be fun to open up chat because I've noticed, so for the last two nights, um, there have been chat exchanges about it, interesting things people have seen or what it means to them or just asking some questions. So um, I believe we do have some background music for you again. And um, we'll have about you know six or seven minutes. Thank you. 
Okay, am I up? Yes. Yes. I'm going to go where you guys can see me a little bit better. That's worse. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Um, my name is Tiff Williams. I'm your Associate Regional Minister. Uh, I wish we could be together in person and I look forward to that hopefully next year. Um, so some of you may not know that my ministry mostly takes place um, in and around the Christian Conference Center. And um, so we are big fans of campfires here. So I thought we'd have a campfire tonight. Uh, for our Vespers. So um, I am going to start my other screen. There we go. And I'm going to mute this one. Okay. Okay, can you see me? Can you see it okay? See what? No. 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 I can kind of see a bench. Yeah. There you are. I can't tell what we're supposed to be seeing. Hey. I can smell the smell. There it is. We can see that. Yay. There we go. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Jeff. So, uh, I'm in my backyard. Um, I live here at the conference center. And we're going to have a little campfire tonight. I'm logged in twice, so I'm hearing myself in stereo. So, one second.
Now you're muted. Tiff, if you can hear me, you're still muted. There we go. Thanks. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Awesome. What I was saying is um, I had this fancy camera and microphone set up and it didn't work, but uh, what I've learned in the last couple months about ministry is that you have to be able to pivot <laughs> and turn around and change course. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So I'm going to get out of the way of the fire. Can you still hear me okay over here? Yes, yes ma'am. All right. Well, let's get started with our Vespers. First, I'm going to read from John 1, one of my favorite pieces of scripture. And it's a reminder that the light is always around us. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we, we trust your promise that darkness shall never overcome the light. As we gaze at this campfire this evening, we hope that our spirit um, breathes in that promise, that we begin to live it with everything we are, that we are the light and the darkness shall never overcome the light. We pray in the name of the one who was called the light of the world, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to sing a song. It's called Sanctuary. Um, and you're welcome to sing along. I don't know if you all have been singing while you're muted or just trying to go for it on Zoom, but I'm going to sing. And if you want to sing along at home, please do. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. For you, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. So I know that you guys just read um, the scripture, but I thought I'd read a piece of it again from Acts chapter 10. About noon the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again a second time, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. 
This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. I uh, was so delighted to hear that this was part of the scripture lesson you all were focusing on this week. It's one of my favorite stories about one of my favorite disciples. I love the apostle Peter. I think he has so much to teach us about life. I love that he's so faithful and that he messes it up so much. Uh, because when I read the stories about Peter, I think if he can be a follower of Christ, with all the things um, that are recorded about him that he gets wrong, then surely I can become a better follower of Christ. I mean, you just think about all the times he gets so close and then fails. You remember the story about Jesus um, walking on the water and Peter goes out to meet him and he gets halfway there and he loses faith. And then he starts to fall into the water. The story of the transfiguration when he goes up with Jesus up to the mountain and um, he's struck by the beauty of it all and he doesn't know what to do. So he says, let's build a temp an altar. And Jesus says, no. Or when Jesus tells the disciples near the end of his life that he's gonna wash their feet uh, and Peter protests, says, absolutely not, Lord. And the big one we all remember uh, before the crucifixion, his denial of Christ. And that after, um, Jesus is gone. He doesn't know what to do. So he just goes back to his life fishing. I think this story is a real turning point in the story of Peter. And that's why I love it so much. He goes from somebody that's focused only on the Jews um, and ministry to them, to the Gentiles. And I think it's just a huge turning point uh, that he gets this sort of new mandate from God through this calling. He gets this new message to turn and change his ministry I really think that our God loves turning points, and that's what I would invite you to think about tonight. As I said, I think this is one of Peter's turning points. I think God puts those turning points in all of our lives, and if we are um, paying enough attention, that God can use them to do miraculous things. I was thinking today about turning points, and I'm going to invite you to pray about yours or share them in, a, in the chat in a second. Um, I can identify two two times in space uh, that I believe God turned my life um, on its head. The first was when I came out here. I'm at the Christian Conference Center in Newton. The first time I came here um, as an unchurched kid and heard about the love of this God that loves everyone, that was a huge turning point in my life. I started to turn my attention to God instead of things of the world. And the other one was when I moved to Texas. I lived in Texas for 13 years. And my, I'm gonna wait for that car. My best friend who funnily enough, his name is Peter. Um, he called me, we were friends. We were friends here at camp and he called and said, um, you know, you're going into ministry. Why don't you just go ahead and get down here and start meeting people and find you a church and find you a job and um, just get ready to go to seminary. And I said, well, that sounds pretty good. And so I did. I left uh, the school I was attending. I left my major. I left my friends. I left my job. And I gave it all up to go to Texas to pursue ministry. Um, I think about those turning points without, without knowing the love of God made present here at camp. Um, my life would, I have no idea what my life would be like because it changed the trajectory of my life. And then when I think about... Uh, my move to Texas, I wouldn't have my husband or my children or the career I have or the friends I have without that one. So those are just two examples. Um, we have the example from Peter too. I'm going to get out of the way and invite you to pray about, as you study this campfire, a turning point in your life. Maybe thank God for the good that came from it. Or maybe if you need a turning point in your life, uh, to pray for God to show you where it's going to come from. So we're just going to have a couple minutes of silent prayer and for you to enjoy my campfire. I got some extra crackly stuff to put on it to make it um, do lots of fun um, colors and things. So I'm going to put that in there and we're just going to have a little bit of silent prayer time for you to pray about turning points and pivots. Um, and then we'll close with prayer and another song.
getting kind of hot down here. I thank you for indulging my campfire. Um, I just love them and I love the excuse to make them. So thank you. You know, Peter, um, after this turning point, he turns his ministry outward. He uh, helps to found the church in Rome. He's the one Jesus called the rock. When ministers get ordained and we lay hands um, on the one who's going to get ordained, um, some say that's because Jesus laid his hands on Peter. There's even a tradition that you've all heard that St. Peter will be the one there at the gates to welcome us home. And so I just thank God for turning points that can change this disciple who seemed to always be messing up um, into the one who welcomes us home. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed my campfire. Um, I think we'll do a prayer and then I'm going to sing one more song and, and then I'll just leave the fire on for a few minutes. We pray with me. God, you are the God of turning points. You're, you're the God who can change any heart, any mind, any spirit. And we just ask that you help turn our, turn all of us here back toward you. Um, to pay attention to you as we retreat separately, but together, uh, to pay attention to the ways you're moving in our lives, to pay attention to where we are called to be the light of the world. Technology that allows us to gather in new ways. And we thank you for the old stuff, like simple sticks and logs that remind us of all the generations who have felt your love through the warmth of a campfire. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. I'm going to sing one more song, and it's one we sing out here a lot at the conference center. And I haven't gotten to sing it much this summer. So I thank you for indulging me while I sing Holy Ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in God's presence on holy ground. Amen. Thank you for asking me to be here. And thank you for indulging my, um, my little campfire.
Want to hear a story? Sure, Beck. Sure. Yeah. I do. <laughs> you made me not log off. <laughs> well, it's a um, because I I I told this one once many years ago at campfire, and it might be Carol who always says, like, oh, tell that one again, but I can't remember who it is who always does that. And I'm like, well, you know, you got to let these things rest, right? Um, and so if it was her, make sure you let her know and have her watch the recording, okay? Uh, got it, Charlene? All right. Uh, it's not a scary story, not really, but it was scary at the time. So... I have to bring you, I, I don't, you've still got the campfire going, right? So for a little ambiance, I'll go back here where I'm kind of sitting in the dark. All right. So uh, first, a little bit of awesome background. I was so blessed uh, when I was in college to have the opportunity to study abroad for the first half of my senior year. And where I went was the country of Tanzania on the east side of Africa, just south of the equator. And at the north end of Tanzania is a place maybe you're a little more familiar with from all those National Geographic videos and whatnot. It, that's where the Serengeti is, to give you some idea. Mount Kilimanjaro, that's in Tanzania. All right, so in our experience, um, there were 20 of us. Half of us were biology people like me. Anyone who knows me shouldn't be surprised by that. Um, and the other half were there to study uh, paleoanthropology because that, that's where Lucy with, uh, was found in, in, in the, the ground, you know, some early hominid remains. Um, and others were there to study current anthropology because that's where the Maasai warriors are, are stationed out of is northern Tanzania, southern Kenya, same area. But whatever we were doing, we all had the opportunity for a month long field work stay. We were out there for, for six weeks, um, but, but uh, one month was a, a, a intensive thing. Where, so I, I lived in a tent on the Serengeti for actually five weeks. Now, at the beginning of our visit, you, you, here, wait, you gotta, you gotta picture this, okay? The space we were camping in, um, imagine like your typical traffic circle area about that big was in the center. And that was mowed or cut, however they manage it, but it was kept as short grass, maybe burned. Um, and there was a fire ring like you see before you, right in the center. And if you can imagine a space that big then surrounded by a uh, gravel driveway and that surrounded by uh, another ring of short grass, kept short, where we struck our tents. And so, you know, we, most of the tents were on one side, but um, let's say maybe, I'm looking up to judge distances, maybe five to eight feet between each tent. That's important for later. Okay, but just, just picture this. Um, so we've got a ring of tents, we've got the central fire. And now back at the beginning of our five week stay, every nighttime noise would make us kind of scared because there are lions, right? And, and hyenas and leopards, we knew they were there because we saw them. We were on safari, right? It, it's not just in the books anymore. It's, it's over there. And don't get me started about the hippos, okay? Because you know they're the most dangerous thing out there. And, and uh, water buffalo. There was one time I was trying to walk to the big, um, where we could take a shower, kind of. There was this thing you could rig up and pour the water in. And there was a water buffalo, and I turned back. So... It was, it was very scary to us at first, but after a month, you drive around, you realize the animals really don't care about us. It's their space, they're not out to get you, you just stay away, right? 
and everything will be fine. And so we got kind of blasé about the whole thing. Well, here we were on the second to last night in camp. And I, as always, the procrastinator, I, I still had to get up early the next morning to do one more bit of field work. So I turned in a little early. Um, and my tent mate, because we all had tent mates out there, she was still out at the fire along with most of our crew. And so they're out there scratching and spitting, whatever they're doing around the fire. And all of a sudden, between my tent, the ring of tents, and the fire, in the road, so remember the size of the space now, right? We heard, <laughs> that's the part they always tell me to do again. All right, so horrible sl snarling and, and something big and loud. Now remember, we're in the Serengeti. Is it a lion? Is it a hyena? Is it a leopard? I don't care. There are at least two of them, and they are right over there. And I'm in my tent. Everybody goes silent, and we listen, and the loser runs off. <coughs> You can hear them running, galloping, whatever they are, fleeing. But we only heard one set of leaving feet. So that meant that the winner was still on site, somewhere between me and the fire. And there I lay in my tent, like nylon, right? In, in my sleeping bag and everybody's silent so we could hear. Or I could hear them because they were coming towards me, the footsteps of this creature crunching along the gravel, padding along the grass between my tent. Remember, I told you this would come in later. The next tent over, which was maybe five to eight feet away, right? So it's right out there, you guys? What is it? I don't know. I'm in my tent. Now, my location was kind of a choice spot. It's other times because the water tank was just like stone's throw. Maybe that one was 10, 12 feet away. And this giant big plastic thing as big as your living room, okay, I had a spigot and it always dripped a little bit. So there was always a puddle there. And the next thing I heard I could hear it drinking. And don't ask me what made me do this, but I reached over in the dark and I picked up my flashlight and I turned it on. All right, here we go. Let's go for effects. We can do this. Flashlight, everyone. I clicked it on. I clicked it off and they all heard from the dark. You guys, there's a Simba back here. We'd been studying Kiswahili, that means lion. So right behind my tent, less than 10 feet away, there's a lioness, female in a no mane. Those are the hunters, you gotta remember that. Remember biology, the, the females do the hunting. So she's there and she's beautiful and muscles and she's, she's, she's right there. And I've turned out my light and I've laid down again, but I, I had to say something. And coming from way over by the fire, I hear the director of our experience say, everybody stay in your tents. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so we stayed in our tents. Of course, immediately I had to go to the bathroom. Uh, too bad. Um, so I just kind of waited in my, and, and one of our drivers, we had Tanzanian folks who knew their way around the Serengeti uh, as, our, as our Jeep drivers, made his way over to one of the vehicles and he started it up, right? And flipped on the headlights and there's just enough room for him to wiggle between the backs of the other tents and the acacias 
that those those thorny knobby little bushy trees back there and he drove and wailed his way along and he put on his high beams and he cracks the window and and this man you'd have to know him he had the best cackling laugh and he's <laughs> there's like 20 of them back here great see this whole time we've been there we knew where the lion prides in the area are they have their territories they kind of move around and all this other time it had been frank and the babes okay there was this young male he was four he kind of had a little bit of a mane going on and he had i think it was seven lionesses in his pride and they were kind of near us but they were over there uh, one of his lady friends had a collar on, see, so you could track her and we'd get reports from the rangers. And this other pride with the full grown male and the 15 females and a handful of cubs, they were in the other part. You know, you'd have to drive for a while to get there. But they're lions, they're big, they move. And they've been coming a little closer and a little closer, but we were leaving, right? It's the last night, second to last, okay, second to last. And apparently they decided it was time to, to book it and uh, set up camp with us. So throughout the rest of the night, I just crossed my legs and uh, hang out in my tent. And every so often they would drive the Jeeps through, uh, run the perimeter, high beams up, give a report, about half of them have moved across the road. Drive around. Everybody by the fire, kind of hung out by the fire. We're on our own in the tents. Finally, I don't know what time it was. It was still dark. Late at night, early in the morning. He, he drove around. Couldn't see anything in the bushes. Drove out to the road, and he was able to see that they'd settled they kind of moved a little bit and they'd settled in the, the bushes across the road at least. And we were all given the all clear. And you know where I went first. And I, I went to sleep that night and I got up early that next morning and there was no evidence that they'd been there. I, we still don't know what it was that had lost but I was the only one who got to see the winner. <laughs> True story. Thanks, Lainey. Any other stories or anything you want to share? Any turning points? I have a lot of puzzle to get done here. So get get the jokes rolling or whatever you're going to do cuz cuz I will say as folks are signing off for the night that um we'll be gathering again starting around 9.30 tomorrow, um, we'll start with uh, the formal part of the event around 10 tomorrow morning, and then things will be going on kind of throughout the day. So um, I think we'll hang here by the fire for a while a bit if, if folks want to, and hope to see you tomorrow.
And if you want to get in the full campfire mood, you can make a s'more in your microwave, but don't let it in there for more than about 10 seconds. <laughs> Both of our speakers tomorrow are not to be missed. So please be sure that you can tune in during that time or watch the recording. Um, it'll be well worth your time. I'm going to sign off. I just um, really miss sleeping with you, Supremes. Don't take that wrong, people. But <laughs> Oh, we will. Oh, you will. Yeah, I know. Yes, we absolutely will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> See you tomorrow sometime. And I see there's a question about the recordings. We are working on getting them into the Google Drive. That I sent an email, the same email you got the first schedule in. There was a link to the Google Drive that has all sorts of stuff in it related to retreat. So you can find the Visio Divina there. You can find um, the schedules and all sorts of stuff. And those recordings will be there soon. I'm not going to place any definite timeline on it, though. Well, it's not like you're doing anything else. I will stop the recording for tonight, though.